And then once he's down, you want to lay literally everything on him. I messed that up. Don't do what I did and mess it up, because that would be a very dumb. Okay, and then I'm curious how much I get. That's a record for me. One, two, one. <laughs> on Saxies, we're back with a Genshin video and in case you guys don't know what Genshin Impact is, it is it's an open world RPG uh, free to play where you are the main character trying to find your lost sibling and along the way you meet many characters, I actually made a video on it right there, you guys should go check it out. And I asked over on my Twitter which would be more helpful, which you guys should go follow by the way, uh, boss fights uh, and guides to them or a guide to the teapots, and you guys said boss fights. So that's what we're here to do. We're here to go over the different bosses in Genshin Impact and how to fight them, because you need to fight the bosses in order to level up your characters and move on in the game. And if you're new here, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this, because I've decided that on Sundays, there are going to be four Sundays, which is kind of ironic, because, you know, Sundays must be a holy day, all that. And then also on Thursdays, it's going to be everything else, such as Genshin, Tower Fantasy, food reviews, you name it. If there's anything you guys would like to see, like specific, make sure to put in the comments and let's get into it. All right, so I think the best way to start off this video would be to explain uh, three main bosses in this game, which are the hypostasis. Now, there's more than three, but it's easier to lump these together because these three work similarly. So first you have the animal hypostasis, which you need to level up some animal characters. Then you have the electro hypostasis down here in Cape Oath. And this, you need to level up electro characters such as Kaching. Then way down here, over in Guyan Stone Force, you have the Geo Hypostasis, who's used to level up characters such as Ningguang and Zhongli. Now, the best way to fight these bosses is basically just hit it with everything, everything you got. That's the best way I can say it. And honestly, that's the most accurate way you can say it. But with these three bosses, and the reason why I'm focusing on these three first is because there's a mechanic at the end of their boss fight that is helpful to know how to get around. Now up here we have the animal hypostasis, and I'm actually going to change my team. Now being that he's the animal hypostasis, he is immune to animo. However, like I said, you just hit him without anything. The hypostasis will also have a shield until you see their core, like that, observed. And the best way I can describe just dodging their attacks is to dodge their attacks. Now this attack is probably the worst because you cannot hit him at all and you have to dodge these mini tornadoes. Okay, now this is the final phase. Uh, that all hypostasis have, but this is the animal hypostasis. How to get around this is you want to float up and then you want to collect all of these little particles. And after that happens, he will, I think he regains a little bit of health. Yeah, he regains a little bit of health and then from this point on, you just hit him until he's dead. There's no end phases anymore and that makes it a lot easier. And man, you let beat that. And after you beat the boss, you get these little flowers, these little blossoms, and you use your resin to collect them. Ignore the fact that I'm capped. Now the next boss is the Electro Hypostasis, and for this fight you're going to want to make sure you have two, one or two Pyro characters. I say one or two because if you have one that applies fast, such as Bennett, see how his E is recharging fast down there, then it makes it a lot easier for the end phase. One thing I like about this boss is he has a Rock, Paper, Scissors attack. With this attack, uh, I want to point this out because you may think you want to stay to the outside of it, but you want to go in that way you avoid the lasers. In this end phase here, you want to apply Pyro to these as quickly as you can. Because if you don't, then he's going to gain more health than you want him to. Like that. And then, now that he's gone, with this hypothesis, you actually don't have to fight him again. Once you destroy all those little electro crystals, we'll call them. He's done. He's down for the count. Now for the most difficult one. And the reason why it's most difficult is it's over there. Air Nager would be happy with the scenery, by the way. If we did cross the sea and we killed our enemies, would we finally be free? And yes, you do have to go all the way around unless you are very, very good at swimming. As you can see, I'm not the best at swimming. I almost made it though. And we're finally here. Now, the Geo Hypothesis is immune to Geo, so. If you're someone who uses a lot of Geo characters like myself, you're in pain. But you have to fight this guy a lot to level up your characters. So what I'd recommend is taking Claymore characters such as Xingyan here, or Eula, because of this mechanic. 
With Gimel here, he sprouts these little pillars, and what you have to do is you have to break these pillars while he's on them, and it makes him hop down. So if you look over here, he's over here now. So I'm gonna follow him. Yeah, see what he's down now? Now I just absolutely wailing to him. When you see these little orbs pop up, you want to break them so that you can create a shield, otherwise you will die. And now we get to the final phase, and what I'd recommend with this is using maybe Zhongli's attack or Jin Yan's attack. Never mind, Jin Yan's attack is not the right move. But what you want to do is you want to destroy these as quick as possible, otherwise he will regain health. Now, I don't think I'm going to get this last one, and I'm not. Alright, if you don't get all the pillars, he'll just come back and you can just destroy the pillars again. But yeah, that's how you beat the Geo Hypostasis. The reason why I went over those three Hypostasis first are because those were the first three introduced into the game, so the mechanics are kind of similar. The next three I'm going to introduce to you are a lot more confusing. Well, not a lot, but they're harder to fight, in my opinion. The first one we're going to fight is a Cryo Hypostasis. And the best advice I have for you against a Cryo Hypostasis is to have as many Pyro characters you can in your party. Or this team, I think this team might work. As many Pyro characters. Also, you need to make sure you activate these three pillars to warm you, otherwise you will die of being too cold. Yes, there is a temperature mechanic. Now, the thing about this boss is he's not down for a long amount of time, so you have to lay into him as much as you can. Alright, once you take down his health as much as you can, he'll pop into this little cube form, and what you want to do is you want to probably apply Pyro a bit, and then you want to hit these cubes into him with a charge attack, and that'll break him more. Also, you want to dodge these. Now that you've broken that and you've broken the shield, you just hit him as much as you can and you want to make sure that you can actually kill him because if you don't, he will get more health when <laughs> you have to go through the entire process again. The next hypostasis is down here in Inazuma and it is called the Pyro Hypostasis. What I'd recommend having for this is Hydro characters such as Protaglia, Jingcho, Kokomi, or even Barbara if you want. Now what makes this hypostasis so special is he has a shield if you look up there, Ion's shield. and. You basically just want to dodge all of his attacks and apply as much hydro to him as you can to break the shield. Then when he attack when he enters this stage, you want to lay him on with as many attacks as you can. Because if you can kill him here, that is ideal. But if you don't kill him like I just did, you want to destroy all these little pyro cubes. And then you can kill him. Woo, let's go. That one isn't too tough because I have Kokomi who is the best character in the game. Now, the last hypothesis we have is the cr Hydro Hypostasis. What I'd recommend for this Hypostasis is a cryo character such as Ayaka or Chongyun, typically. If you have a DPS Diona, 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 Diona built, I'd recommend using her too. Oh, and Ganyu. Ganyu's another great unit. Who is coming back in the 3.1 update, so keep an eye on it. Now, I would not recommend using characters such as Yula, because Yula may have a cryo symbol by her name, but she's more used for physical damage which is not going to be as effective against this boss. Ayaka is probably the character I'd recommend the most for this because of her little dash attack here. Alright, and here we have the Hydro Hypostasis, who I, th I think is actually only used for two characters, but they're good characters. Now how you want to do this is, when you see these little dudes come in, one, they both heal, so you want to take them out as soon as possible, and the best way to do that is to freeze them, which is why I recommended having two cryo, as many cryo characters as you can. When this attack comes in, run. You, you need to get out of here, because if you get stuck, you will die. It's very, it's very scary. Now this attack, I don't even know how to dodge. You just do your best to avoid the dolphins, because they're very deadly. Now, this attack, these guys move slower. You don't want to hit them with two cryo attacks. That's the best way to take them out. If they get to the big guy over here, they will heal him. You do not want that. Trust me. And now you have beaten the cryo the hydro hypostasis. There's actually one more hypostasis I forgot about, because he doesn't have hypostasis in his name. But he looks like one, so we're gonna count him. He's called the Perpetual Mechanical Array. Now, this is personally my least favorite. <laughs> so you start off, he's basically a mechanical hypostasis. What's nice about him is he doesn't have a shield, you can hit him at any time. Then when he goes into this stance, he will summon four little mechanical dudes, and you want to aim for the one that has a circle around him. And you better hope it's not the dude that has a shield, otherwise you will be crying. And then once he's down, you want to lay literally everything on him. I messed that up. Don't do what I did and mess it up, because that would be a very dumb. Okay, and then... I'm curious how much I get. That's a record for me, and it's on YouTube, so that's awesome. And yeah, I think I'm gonna make this a two-part video. I think this first part is going to be just the hypostasis, because I didn't realize that there were seven of them. And then the next part is going to be all the other bosses, which are the Magu Kenki, the Thunder Manifestation, the Ocean Nid, the Primo Geo Bishop, and the two Regis Vines, so that's six on their own. And then the third video is going to be about the Trounce Domains, or the bigger bosses, such as Storm Terror, 
One I can't say because it's a spoiler. Um, another one that I can't say because it's a spoiler. A lot of them are spoilers, so just wait for that video. <laughs> anyway, Saxies, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. Uh, Sunday, there's going to be a horror game out. I don't know which one it is going to be yet, but Spike Spiegel says you should subscribe, so you definitely should, and I'll see you guys later, Saxies. Peace out.